welcome to scrapbookingstation.com. Uh, today I've got a fun project, and uh, we're going to kind of trade in our paper cutter for some wire snips and some empty beer cans. So, we're going to make a wind chime, and I guess the place to start would be at the top. And so all I've done here is taking, taken three twigs and wrapped it up with some jute. And the only point is to try and keep them from wiggling all over the place so that I've got this pretty star. And um, I use some macrame knots, but really just anything that holds them secure would do. And the other thing you're going to need is some hardware. And this is just something heavy enough to keep the strings hanging down on your wind chime. So I got some nails and some washers. And then you're going to need some wire. And like I said, wire snips. And then the fun part about this is that we're going to take these beer cans and we're going to use our big shot and we're going to make some butterflies to fly around in our wind chime. So anyway, I'm going to take the camera over my shoulder and we'll take a look at some of the elements. Okay, so for the weight on each of the strings from your wind chime, you could use something like nails or something like washers or what I'm going to do here is a combination of both. And basically, you just want to kind of tap them hanging to make sure you like the sound. Now this is a very light tinkle, so but I'm going to have, I'm going to make 12 of them. You could do 6, you could do 8, you could do 24. It just matters how much wind you get in your area or just what kind of sound you want to create. And then I'm going to cut these about a foot long. And all I'm going to do is wrap them just around a couple times the head of this nail. And then bring them up. And then twist. And all I really want to do here is have my nail hang straight down from the washer. And I've just got some flat nose pliers so I can twist that a little bit more. Now you could also do this with the same fishing or wire that you're going to use for your strings hanging down. But I didn't want these to get too tangled up. We get storms down here in Georgia and the wind really does pick up. And so this way I'm kind of hoping that they uh, stay pretty straight and, and don't tangle. And like I said, I could have gone with just nails or just washers. But this should make them pretty heavy. And then you just wrap that around the inside of your washer like so. And then I just continue twisting just to keep it consistent. Okay. And that's the anchor for each of your strings. Now I'm going to do 12 strings. So I've already put all these together, and like I say, you just make as many as you're going to need for your wind chime. Okay, so all those are put aside. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to take out my big shot, and I'm going to make butterflies. So I'm using the Big C um, Beautiful Butterflies die cut. And I'm going to pull back just a little bit and we're going to take a look at how this is done. Okay, I actually jumped the gun. First thing you're going to need is some empty beer cans. So, no matter how much you clean them out or dry them out, when you start cutting into them, I would have a paper towel underneath just to be sure. Now, these things cut very easy, so I'm going to use the sharp point of my scissors just to make a starting point. And you really don't have to be too concerned About the curved end of your can because you're not going to use that. And you want to cut off the top, cut down one side, and then cut off the bottom. that out a little bit. You just want to turn it to rough edges. So 
you have a nice flat piece to use in your big shot. And you can see where I've got little sprinkles. And the bottom edge, pretty much the same thing. Just to clean up those rougher edges. Now do be careful because it is uh, kind of sharp aluminum. And so I would say this is not a kid-friendly project. Not at this point, anyway. Okay, now we're ready for the big shot. So I'm going to bring that in. All I'm going to do is lay that across. I'm only going to use the two butterflies. There's also two half butterflies. So I'm going to make my aluminum sandwich. Run that through. And when you're done, and you could actually save that piece and do another butterfly. Or you could use a 16 ounce can that's wide enough and cover both of these. Or both of those long ways. Okay, so now I've got a large one and a small one. Let me get rid of these. And what you want to do now is punch a hole in the middle and tie them together so you've got a butterfly like this. Sorry, I've got a fly in the room that's bothering me. Okay, so I'm using my Sharpie marker because I actually want these to be turned out away from each other. And this stuff bends really easy. And actually, this is not too sharp. The Big Z die actually makes a smooth edge. Now, I wouldn't make it as an earring, put it against your skin or anything, but this is going to be fine as far as a wind chime. So I got both of those curled up. I'm going to sandwich them together. And then using my crop dial or just any hole punch, I'm going to pop a hole right in the middle. Now I've got some fishing twine, but really any string. Now remember it's going to be outside, so you don't want something that's going to deteriorate or maybe even get mossy. I'm going to run that through there and then come up the other side. I should have put my glasses on first. This is actually easier than I'm making it look. I've got the two ends that I'm going to pull through, and I apologize, you can't see the fishing twine. But basically, I've got it looped around the bottom of my butterflies. And then all I'm going to do is a double knot. Mm -hmm. I think it shift around a little while. Anyway, so now you've got like a two-sided, three-dimensional butterfly to use on your wind chimes. Now I've made a couple, but I'm going to stop the video here for a second and finish all 12 pairs. So I've got, let me see, I've got some beer drinking to do. <laughs> kind of kidding, but not really. I'll get back when I have all 12 butterflies put together and then we'll make the strings. Okay, so now I'm down to my last butterfly. So this is number 12. And the only thing I've been doing is I make a um, slip knot on one end. Position it where I want it. In this case, I'm going to have it on the end. And then secure it with another knot. And let me get my glasses. I can't see. So I'm just doing a double knot 
And the only thing I'm keeping an eye on as far as where to place the butterflies, either up high or middle or down low. And this one I'm going to want to put middle to low. I've cut my wires anywhere between 16 and 24 inches and I'm purposely leaving ends. So if I need to adjust anything, I've got plenty of rope. And all, I, all I'm doing is threading it through uh, the wire that I've already got tying my, butter, my two butterflies together. And so middle to me is about that far from the top. And I'm just going to double knot that. And then my weights are my anchors, the washer and nail, pretty much to want to be consistent. So when the wind blows, you know, they're level with each other to make the noise I want. And so that, in my case, is about here. Now, I eyeballed everything. I didn't measure anything. And it doesn't have to be exact. Now you can measure if you're so inclined, but for me, really 12 of anything is asking a lot. I don't like doing repetitious work. Okay, and as I said, that was the last of my butterflies, so I'm going to pick that up. Ah, oh, there you have it. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. So I'm going to hang that up and that'll be um, what you see when you, when you um, first started watching the video. And right now I've just got this little hook. Hopefully it'll be enough. So I did want to talk a little bit about the Big Z die. Now I used that butterfly die that I showed you at the beginning. But then I started experimenting a little bit. Because this sizzlet, actually I could use it, and I would not want to make 12 of these, but maybe you wanted to make a little barrette or something. These also textured, and the only thing here is you do have to manipulate it a little bit in order to get the butterfly to punch out. But then these edges are very smooth, just like the big Z die. And then I tried framelits, and they were kind of 50-50 success or not, but these are very rough edges, so I probably would not do that. This happens to be my Christmas ornament framelits. So, I mean, push gun to shove, sure, you can get a couple of them out, but like I said, it's about 50-50 on those. And then, if you don't like butterflies, uh, Stampin' Up! right now has got several Big Z dies that would probably work for this application. Uh, there's a, a leaf set, and a maple leaf, and one other leaf looks to be large enough. Of course, there's pennants, which would be pretty cool for a guy. Circles, or, um, you know, they have scalloped circles as well. So, a couple choices, and I'm going to go hang this up. Thank you for watching.